Hi everybody, it's Courtney from Schneider Driver Recruiting again, along with Marissa and April. It's been a while since the three of us have been together, but today we wanted to kind of come on back to a really, really popular segment that we did a little earlier in the year and basically answer your frequently asked questions. So kind of a all around big, if you have any question of any kind, we'll hit a couple topics, you ask the questions, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, but before we kick off, we want to remind you about the contest that we're having for some free Schneider swag throughout the month of October. So as a reminder, we got some mugs, ball caps, whatever you want to win. Um, basically all you have to do, one is have a CDL, mm -hmm. um, and then text CONTEST to 28,000. And then once you text that word, one of our um, recruiting assistants on the other line will text you back the link for the application, fill it out, and you're entered in to win. We'll have a weekly winner every throughout the month of October. And then we got some cool stuff to give away. So if you want some free hat, free mug, whatever it looks, these are really cool. I was just saying how I want one. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a CDL though, can't enter. Um, so if you are interested, make sure to just enter in the contest and we'll go from there. So kind of kick it off. We can just kind of dive on into some of the couple big topics that we get a lot of questions on. Yeah, so um, starting January 1st, 2020, we are going to be offering paid holidays. Very exciting. Um, it will be six paid holidays. New Year's, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Now the amount of holiday pay is going to depend on your Schneider tenure. Yeah. So more is to come on that. Yeah, it's really exciting. We've had a lot of, for a long time, lots of questions about those days, yes, especially. Sure. So if you're not home and you're driving, wanting to get those. So something new as, to, as of the first of next year, which is coming up fast. That's exciting. Yeah, Very for exciting. sure. Also want to remember, or to remind everybody, I should say, of everyone watching that we are live right now. We have the computer in front of mm -hmm. us, so start messaging us. We are in real time right mm -hmm. now. Courtney will be able to read those questions and we can answer them for you today. So definitely any viewers that have a burning question, start bringing those on in. Absolutely. As a topic to kind of get us started while those questions start to filter yeah. and wanted to talk about some of the things that we get asked as recruiters on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And one of those is tuition reimbursement. Yeah, Do we have that program? What does that program look like? Certainly something to take advantage of because if you can get most of your schooling paid for, mm -hmm. why not? Mm -hmm. The way that that works here at Schneider is 30 days after your date of hire, we start to reimburse you back for that tuition. If you paid out of pocket or if you have a loan through the truck driving school, through a bank, something like that. Right. The documentation that we request from you guys is going to show that it's you know your information mm -hmm. on that documentation, the school's information, as well as an itemized list of how much you paid for tuition. Right. The reason we ask for that itemized list is we reimburse back for the tuition cost. Okay. If there's additional costs for lodging, say you, ha say you had to stay at the school, um, endorsements, uh, books, that part we do not reimburse back for. The most that we reimburse back for is up to $7,000. So if school was more than seven grand, sadly the most we reimburse back for is that 7,000. And it's $200 a month back to you each month. Right. If it is a teaming position that you are on, it is $400 a month directly back to you. Right. So Great. just wanted yeah. to highlight that program Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. So. And teams are, team ones are a really big boost for that. You yes. have a lot of miles too. And so you're just getting an all around bigger compensation with that team account. Mm -hmm. um, a couple questions coming in. Um, a lot of good stuff. A lot of questions about do you have certain types of jobs in my area? So whether you live, I know Shannon mentioned, do you have any jobs in Canada? Yes. Um, do you have jobs out of Ohio? Yes. I know you said, Brian said local routes. I do off the top of my head remember, I know we do have some local accounts mm -hmm. in Ohio. So a good way to know like what exactly do we have, um, go to schneiderjobs.com and it'll ask you to type in your zip code. Um, so it'll pull up anything basically in your area and it'll tell you how much experience you have. So if you're brand new to driving and it says, says available to all CDL holders, it's a great place to start check it out click on it find out you know the, kind of the minor details about it and if you're really interested apply and then chat with one of us to see if it's something that you'd be interested in so those are really big um have a lot of cool stuff um if you have your cdl juan says he wants to get started after christmas absolutely um mm -hmm. give us a call kind of maybe a week or two before you want to get started yep. um, mm -hmm. just in case any uh sorts of positions change or come available so because if you were to apply right now and a new one comes up that you were really interested in more than maybe the one you talked about today it just keeps things a little more up to date so if yeah if you want to start right after christmas and after the holidays 
go right ahead and give us a call. And I would recommend about like a week or two ahead of when you want to start. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we can definitely schedule you a couple weeks out. You know, yeah. we want to make sure that you go through that interview or application review process, get you pre-qualified, and then we certainly can work with you from there. Mm-hmm. So definitely, definitely recommend calling a little bit earlier than later. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good call. Um, when you come on board, uh, Matt said he's starting orientation in Phoenix on Tuesday. Awesome. Congrats, Congrats Matt. Um, so kind of wanted to give a brief, 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 brief breakdown mm-hmm. of orientation and what they entail. Um, they will be varied depending on experience, what line of business you're going into, uh, things like that. So we'll mm-hmm. kind of just give a very brief overview of that. Yeah, so that first day of orientation, one of the major things that happens is every single driver gets a new DOT physical. It is complimentary of Schneider. I think one of the questions that we all get asked a lot is, hey, I just took a Why? physical <laughs> like a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah. every, every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of on, our onboarding process here at Schneider, so it's of no expense to you. It is something that's just part of our process. The other big thing that happens on that first day is doing the hair and urine drug test. That happens mm-hmm. right at orientation as well. Some accounts do require a pre-work screen, which is doing different exercises to measure the heart rate to make sure you're physically fit for the job. But your recruiter would definitely go over that with you in more detail. Not Mm -hmm. all accounts require it, um, but you know, something to keep in mind depending on the account that you're going on to, it may be a requirement on that first day as well. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I think it's also important just to highlight Uh, Make sure to bring your direct deposit information Mm -hmm. as well with you because Mm -hmm. we'll get you all set up on that first day as well Mm -hmm. for orientation. For sure. Um, And no matter where you live, we'll help you with transportation to get to orientation. Caesar Mm -hmm. asks that you currently have this permit, you're going to get your license down there in Miami and Florida. Awesome. Um, After you get your Class A CDL, we'll definitely, depending on the position that you're going into, we'll get you to orientation. So. Um, anything that's hauling uh, dry freight, so we refer to it if you're new to trucking, van truck load division or dedicated divisions. Um, for a experienced driver, is just four days, like a Monday through Thursday. An experience uh, about a minimum of 18 days. So um, definitely depends on where you are, where you live, and if you live far away from the training location or the orientation site, we'll help you with transportation to get there. So not an issue. We get you transportation when you get there from where you know either the bus depot the airport to get to the hotel and then a shuttle back and forth from the hotel to the training center every day so really if you're worried about how am i going to get to where i need to go we'll help you out mm-hmm. absolutely and one yep. of the new things that we recently started here at Schneider, speaking of transportation mm-hmm. is previously your recruiter was not the one that booked your airplane ticket for you if you are flying. Mm -hmm. We recently have changed that and we've gotten great reviews on it because now we can actually speak to you on the phone and book that flight with you to find out what's gonna be the best schedule for you. You know, if at all possible, hey, what airport is best for you to fly out of? Do you want to leave a little bit earlier in the day? Do you want to leave a little later in the day? And right. I don't want to promise we can, you know, make everyone's flight perfect, but it certainly is. There's more flexibility there to make the flight mm-hmm. more pleasant and better for your schedule right. coming to orientation. <laughs> right, right, right. And I've heard a lot, yeah, lots of good things. Um, and it, can, like you said, that flexibility. Um, I have some that just, I, I don't mind being there, you know, at 6 a.m. in the morning, whereas mm-hmm. others, it's, you know, hey, it's a big airport. I want to try to make sure I can get through security. Let's book mm-hmm. like a noon flight. So, and it gives those options. We can um, book different, you know, some said I fly Southwest quite a bit. Can I try for Southwest? So mm-hmm. if there's a Southwest flight, then it's something that we can do and book too. So yeah, mm-hmm. we've been doing it for a couple months now. Mm-hmm. And it's really been kind of a game changer. It really helps yeah. out and especially yes. gets you to where you need to be. And then can get you from the airport to the hotel once you've officially landed mm-hmm. um, for orientation too. So all that is going to be handled by your recruiter now. So, and while we're on the topic of orientation, Marissa, do you want to cover a little bit more of that packing checklist? What items to bring? Because I know it's something we get asked yes. on a regular basis. <clears throat> yeah, so we we really do get asked this on a regular basis. Um, you want to make sure to bring enough clothing with you to orientation. Now there are also laundry facilities. You could do laundry at the hotel as well. So it is kind of up to you on how much clothing you'd like to bring. Um, also, if you are on any prescription medication, make sure to bring that in the original mm-hmm. bottle or box. Um, you do want to make sure to bring documents for your I-9 as well, mm-hmm. direct deposit information too. Um, work boots, you'll make sure to bring your work boots, and if you don't have a pair, you can actually purchase a pair for $50. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do provide that as well. 
Um, and then you also do want to bring, you know, of course, your medical card, you know, all those details, mm -hmm. even though you are going to be doing the physical and drug screening first day, it's just good to have all those documents at hand. Absolutely. I say if you are questioning or wondering whether to bring it, just do it. Yeah, yep. it's <laughs> better to have it than to not have it, and then you're all set up no matter what. So absolutely. Um, a couple more, where are your training locations? Uh, Frank has that. All over. <laughs> all over. All over. We got a lot of different, and again, depending on which line of business you're going into, can determine where you're going to orientation mm -hmm. to. So, for example, our um, tanker or bulk um, line of business, we have operating centers in Coriopolis, Pennsylvania, and in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, so those cater to our tanker division. So if you're going into that line of business, that's where you would travel. Um, now, speaking of, those orientations um, are a little bit longer, just a lot more things to go through. Mm -hmm. So if you girls want to touch on that a little bit, too, and just give a little insight as to the tanker orientation. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So for inexperienced drivers, your orientation for tanker is going to be about four and a half weeks in length. Like Courtney had mentioned, there's so much more involved with hooking up the hoses, being able to clean out the tank. There's just there's a mm -hmm. lot more that goes into that entire side of the business. So it is longer. You also are out on the road a little bit longer with that training engineer, getting that more one-on-one -on -one time, mm -hmm. hands-on in the field. Right. Um, we actually have a new program that we're rolling yeah. out here at Schneider. Yes. Very, very exciting with helping drivers get their hazmat because the hazmat endorsement is required once, I mean, you can get, you can hire out of the position without it, but right. you mm -hmm. eventually do need to get it. So do you want to cover that program a little bit more, what that entails? Yes. Yep. So we do have the program. It's the bumper to bumper program. So this program offers a self-paced online modules to help prepare for the hazmat. So like April just said, you don't need the hazmat for many of the positions right at time of hire. You can get it, you know, within 60 days or a little longer, you know, as long as you're working to obtain that. And with this bumper to bumper program, it really is self paced, you know, you get to learn a lot. You also do have training there as well that yep. can assist you if you have any questions. And we have seen a lot of success with that. Right, right. Um, I think actually our trainers, uh, our operations teams are the ones that came to us and said, hey recruiters, here's something that we're starting new. We want you to know, to know about it to mm -hmm. communicate that with drivers. So they said that those have been, have been using this bumper to bumper program have you know, whether if they get like 80% or more on the practice exams, they've not yet had anybody fail the test then at the mm -hmm. DMV. So, I mean, why not? That's and awesome. then yeah. you, re you reimburse for the hazmat too. Mm -hmm. So, um, that part for is. For most positions. Yeah, for most for positions. Most positions. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Uh, tanker division, talking about yes. tanker, will reimburse for that hazmat endorsement. If you have to, um, I also got to, they told us if you have to, say, pay 15 bucks to update your license, then to get, have it say hazmat. We'll reimburse for that update too. Oh, okay. So new thing too that just was kind of mm -hmm. there was always kind of like a what do you or do you not? And so yes, yes we know we'll reimburse for that entire cycle. So really cool program and it just takes a little bit of the stress off of uh, gotta get it started right away and get it done mm -hmm. and takes forever to get. So um, it's just a nice little self paced thing that we have then. Absolutely. And just make sure to save mm -hmm. all of those receipts so that we can reimburse you yeah. back for it so we have that paper trail. Um, I know the rule of thumb is too is if you get the endorsement within 30 days of getting the endorsement is when those receipts have to be turned in to get that reimbursement. So just remember mm -hmm. there is that time window on that as well on when they do need to be turned in. One other thing I want to step back to a little bit talking about documentation for orientation. For our new drivers out there, if you just graduated, you have the paper copy, you don't have the actual card, a question we get a lot is, can I still come to orientation? You okay. definitely can. As long as after that road test was completed, you went to the DMV, you did indeed update, mm -hmm. and you got that paperwork showing you have your class A, it's just not, you haven't gotten the card in the yep. mail, yep. that's totally fine. Just make sure to bring that paperwork with you, but right. it's a question we get a lot, so we, I wanted yeah. to make sure yeah. to readdress that one. And so. we get it, like every state is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I think Wisconsin takes a week or two to get us actual hard copy as well. Some states may be longer, so we get it. So no worries, absolutely, as long as you have that, yeah, that Class A mm -hmm. CDL paperwork, that's mm -hmm. totally fine, absolutely, absolutely. One other orientation question as well is in the correspondence or the emails that we send our drivers, this is more for inexperienced versus experienced, but they do go out on the road with the training engineer. So drivers ask, how come my email says I need to bring like a sleeping bag yeah. or mm -hmm. a pillow? Yeah. The reason being during that week for inexperienced van truckload orientation, you're out on the road with the training engineer. 
actually in the truck sleeping, you know, live in the real life of a truck driver during that time. So that's why we do require that you have some type of bedding with you because you will be sleeping in the truck. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. And just a little more comfort in your wallet. Yeah, your exactly. own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, a couple more questions. Um, Bruce asked, what are our tankers all? Oil, gas, chemicals. Um, every liquid you could possibly think of is mm -hmm. something we can possibly haul. Um, so chemicals, whether they be hazardous or non-hazardous, agricultural chemicals, um, liquid latex, uh, that's something that we've seen in the past couple of years. We just pr will ask you um, about that. It tends to be an allergy that we s is a common allergy. Um, so we do haul liquid latex. That's something we haul. Um, mm -hmm. Lube, water treatment polymers, uh, things like that. So anything you can really imagine, we haul. Nothing that would um, be so hazardous that would explode on impact. That's it. We get mm -hmm. that question quite a bit because safety-wise, we just want to make sure you're safe hauling stuff. So we don't haul really anything like that. Mm -hmm. So good question, though. Very good question. And again, our training for Tinker is outstanding, and we mm -hmm. do prepare you, you know, to be out on the road. So if you are a new driver, you know, you just got your endorsements or you're working on your endorsements and you're maybe you're a little hesitant about going on a tanker you know because you haven't hauled the bulk liquid chemicals rest assured that our training program will prepare you for when you're out on the road mm -hmm. um i want to address uh john asked a really good question um fresh out of school paying for schooling out of pocket i'm just kind of asked for what exactly is starting pay is a lot of like mechanic background um a lot of things john depend on and again I know it will sound like a broken record. It depends on the position. It depends on the position. Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, yeah. Where you live can depend on how much you're paid. Um, that, so um, as just kind of a rule of thumb, I, coming right fresh out of truck driving school, yeah, you will be a little bit lower than somebody that, say, let's say has five years of mm -hmm. driving experience, but you have opportunities for pay increases. So we look at um, certain steps throughout the you know, way on your first year to give you those pay increases performance pay mm -hmm. so if you're um you know on track for um you know fuel efficiency you're safe at driving as well you're making on time deliveries you get additional pay added to your weekly paycheck too mm -hmm. which is a big thing that i don't think a lot of people understand you know, when you get paid out like a bonus um sometimes those then get heavily taxed whatever it may be mm -hmm. with this performance pay you're getting a weekly paycheck that's added mm -hmm. to that weekly paycheck so it's going towards your line haul pay, so that's a big deal. The positions with sign-on bonuses can vary depending on experienced, inexperienced, mm -hmm. and then are always paid out in four payments. So, um, yeah, you'll hear us say that time and time <laughs> again, it depends. Um, and then the tuition reimbursement. And then the tuition reimbursement. So, so you pay out of pocket. Incentive. Exactly. You pay out of pocket, we can reimburse for that. So lots of things happening. So it's just, again, um, check out SchneiderJobs.com. And if you really just, even if you have questions and you're not sure about applying, call the um, 800 number that's on the screen so that you can at least just talk to um, somebody at their, one of our recruiting assistants, um, very knowledgeable, and then can give you more information and then you can decide what you want to do moving forward in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So a um, lot of good things coming in. So once again, Courtney, Marissa in April, mm -hmm. just chatting about what we get asked quite frequently just as a standard recruiter. So nothing in particular, but if you want to, talk a little bit, uh, ask us questions. Um, Kevin says he's uh, starting with Schneider in January. All right. Manual versus um, automatic transmissions. Mm -hmm. Do you girls want to chat about that a little bit? So um, we are in the process, um, over two thirds of our fleet have automatic transmissions and we're in the process of converting everything over to automatic. We do still have some manuals, but again, we are in that process of converting them over really better on fuel compliance, Absolutely. you know, less of a distraction fatigue for the driver as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is going to depend on what is available. I would talk to your recruiter that you are working with and ask if you would be able to get into a manual at that time. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a lot of questions too uh, with drivers um, don't necessarily have their CDL yet but want to get started, how do I get started, where do I look? Um, great question. We have um, a lot of variety of different things on our Schneider Jobs page. Um, what I would highly recommend, so when you go on to Schneider Jobs, there is a, um, literally a section that says uh, truck driver, right at the top. And it says, um, for our inexperienced driver, how to become a truck driver. So, or find truck driving school. They're both really, really good tools to have. Mm -hmm. So finding a truck driving school, I think, is your number one thing you want to start with. 
Um, we, on the, it talks about the tuition reimbursement, but on the mm -hmm. website, it will talk to you a little bit about, if you scroll down to your state, there will be a list of different schools that are listed. These are schools that we have either worked with in the past or have heard really good things about. Mm -hmm. um, those of you that are prior military, if you have any sort of GI Bill benefits, uh, you can use that to pay for your schooling. So a lot of the schools with the stars next to it will accept GI Bill benefits mm -hmm. too. So um, I think that is your number one thing to get started. Um, we do get sometimes too, well, I really just don't have the financial well how or capability to do that. Um, I would also talk too about um, looking into grants. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of things that people forget about. Um, the, your local job center can talk to you a little bit about the Workforce Innovation Act. Mm -hmm. um, helps people that are going back to school for a certain trade or type of job get a grant to go back to school. So those are definitely things I would check out on that Schneider Jobs page and how to become that because that's really, really a good tool to have and I don't think a lot of people know that it's there. Mm -hmm. So lots of good good feed coming in there for sure, for sure. Um, and then let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading out loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so a little bit more about just um, new graduate, need new um, information about my application. If you already applied uh, and you're like, I haven't heard anything or what's going on, we try to get to every new one that comes in as quick as possible within 24 hours. Uh, call us. You know what I mean? And we'll get you to, over to a recruiter either on the spot. If you can't talk right away, we can get you scheduled too. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different things that can definitely help out. So um, I think that's really a a big one that yes. a lot of people, you know, I'm waiting on my application, just call us. Well, just call yeah. us, we're here for you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of the application review process, I know a little while ago we did do a Facebook Live talking about the application review, but we do get questions about that. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. do I do this? How long does it take? So kind of to give you a little bit of a summary on that, the average application review, I'd say is about 20 to 30 minutes on average. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, the main thing to have in front of you or with you while we're doing that application review is to have a five-year address history, mm -hmm. yes. have all of your information on your motor vehicle history, as well as employers, any DOT employment within the last 10 years, mm -hmm. and then any non-driving jobs within the last three years. Um, also, we a question we get is, do we talk about criminal background? We do ask that question on the front end. We run a criminal background report on every single individual that we hire. So it mm -hmm. is something we do talk about in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, what else am I missing that we talk about motor in the interview? Motor vehicle history. Motor vehicle history. Yep. We'll run the motor vehicle report. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of people, I'm glad you brought up the 10-year um, DOT history. A lot of people are like, well, that's 10 years ago. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, actually it does. We will, that's how we determine how much you're going to get paid so yeah. mm -hmm. um, we determine based on experience so that's why we ask mm -hmm. the 10 years so anything within the last 10 years even let's say you drove for a little while in 2012 and took a break came back mm -hmm. we'll count that 2012 mm -hmm. tractor trailer experience so make sure that you're including that on your application if you don't remember dates do your best to just you know give an estimate to us because mm -hmm. um, we can verify things as well so uh, i get that quite a bit i couldn't remember the date so i didn't put it on that's fine, but try mm -hmm. to, even if it's just a good estimate, that's okay too. We're not gonna, mm -hmm. you know, because we verify it. So yeah, it's, we do. you know, as long as you can get it as close in a ballpark number, you know, we can kind of take it from there. So right. Just to have it as accurate as possible. Right. Um, another thing I kind of want to go into uh, company policies. We asked Shannon asked if our drivers are allowed to bring on their family dog. So I'll let you take over that one. <laughs> okay. So if you have a service animal, um, there is a process that you would um, follow. You know, you'd have to speak to our team and then you can follow that process for a service animal. Now, if the animal is not a service animal, um, we're not able to have any any animals in the truck. Yeah. One of our big policies, um, a lot of people ask, well, why not? Uh, mm -hmm. Safety. Really, safety is our number one core value. We want to make sure that you're not being distracted anyway. So unfortunately, yeah, no pets or animals a lot in the trucks, but mm -hmm. um, we can have passengers if after you've had a certain amount of time of safe driving experience with us. Um, usually it's a, um, anybody in your immediate family, um, or excuse me, passenger has to be 18 or older, unless they're an immediate family member, then you guys should have um, 10 or older. So th that's for, I shouldn't say it, preface, that's for dry freight. Now tanker, they have to be 18 or older no matter mm -hmm. what, just because of the hazmat. Um, so it's really great for, um, I know we've had drivers let kids on summer break or Christmas vacation, and they've had that safe driving experience. So 
um, hey, can my kid come with me? He's 12. He's on Christmas break. And, well, yeah, sure. That would be, you know, that's mm -hmm. fun. So, mm -hmm. yeah, as long as you hit those guidelines, it's definitely something you can come on into and mm -hmm. share that family experience. So that's uh, kind of a neat thing that we always have. But, um, so, got more questions. Jason likes the hats and cups. Well, <laughs> Jason, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, we mentioned it earlier. Um, we're gonna, I'll mention it again. We have a contest going on right now for the month of October. So basically, um, some of the stuff that we have, so just uh, different hats, camel, military, um, and the different mugs here too, you can win them. So mm -hmm. basically, all you have to do is pretty simple. Just have your Class A CDL, um, text CONTEST to 28,000. Um, once you do that, one of our recruiting assistants will get that respond back with a link to our application. All you have to do is fill out then the application you're entered in. Um, so we will draw um, one winner each week. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of keep your eyes and ears peeled for next week as well. But it's just, it's cool stuff. It's free. Oh, yeah. Everyone likes free things. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. So if you're, yeah, if you're interested, text CONTEST to 28,000. That would be your way in to get one of these. If you're already a current uh, driver, I got that question last week quite a bit. The current driver that wants some apparel, um, we do have links on our website to the, our company store mm -hmm. as well. So that has much more than hats, this type of stuff. I bought myself last year a pretty cool Under Armour Schneider get up. So <laughs> it's very warm too. It's for like warmer days. So I really like it. So you can check it out. Lots of stuff that you can get for Christmas presents coming up. So mm -hmm. it's something to think about as well. But a lot of good things. So keep asking some more questions too. Um, we'll try to answer those. If you have any additional questions, let us know. Um, what I do realize we didn't talk about yet, we talked about bulk training, van truck load training, but not intermodal. And we want to give intermodals some love, too. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> And talk a little bit about them as well. Yeah, certainly. So for intermodal, um, once again, had Courtney had mentioned earlier, every orientation, or I should say every section of the business has their own orientation locations. Mm -hmm. So Chicago is one of them. Where else do we go for intermodal? We're uh, in Haslett, 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 Texas. Texas. Or uh, Kearney, New Jersey. Jersey yep. um, El Monte, Florida. Also had, or Florida. Sheesh. <laughs> El Monte, <laughs> California. Yeah, California. Florida, California. Florida, California. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, <laughs> so those are the locations that you would go to for that particular orientation because the training is definitely different. Once again, compared to Van Truckle, there is just simply more involved with navigating mm -hmm. the rail yards, getting in and out, working with the chassis. Um, orientation for that for experienced drivers is five days in length instead of the four days in length with the Van Truckle division. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about inexperience, mm -hmm. the difference? Yep. So inexperience is a little longer. You are going to be out with a training engineer for about six and a half days, and you will have training for three full weeks. Uh, really, you know, like April just said, we really want to make sure you're comfortable working out in the rail yards. There is a little more involved in an intermodal type opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, didn't mention, going back to the gear here. <laughs> I was just looking at uh, Matt, who's going to orientation next week. Do you have any of this at the training facilities? Yes. Um, great question. <laughs> so, um, majority, not all, but a majority of our training facilities will have some sort of shop and or store. Um, just depending on the size and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you can definitely buy gear at the facility that you're at, or if you're a current driver in your home terminal and you're coming back home to Indianapolis or whatever it may be, um, we do have some of the gear at the facilities as well, too. So if you don't want to order online or do stuff like that, we have them at the facilities, too. So I think they're pretty cool. I think they're fun. But um, there is a lot of other stuff coming in. Keep um, asking if you, um, you know, have any additional questions. I know some of us are used, uh, some questions we're asking about um, sleep study tests and sleep apnea. Um, so that's one of the questions too, if you guys wanna elaborate on the CPAPs and things like that as well. Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. So at the end of every application review, we do have five medical questions that we ask. It is just a yes or a no response to those medical-based questions because we as recruiters are not medically certified or know a great deal about that the way our medical team does. If you are currently treating for sleep apnea or have had a sleep study in the past and found out you did or did not need the sleep apnea mm -hmm. machine, we transfer you over to our medical team and then they kind of take it from there. Of course, with DOT, there needs to be the compliance of you know mm -hmm. using those sleep mm -hmm. apnea machines if they're needed. 
the main rationale for that is we want the driver to get that good night's sleep and to be mm-hmm. rested because safety first and always is our number one core value yeah. here at Schneider. Yeah. And the only way to be safe is to have a good night's sleep and be fresh and make sure that your brain is, you know, clicking and thinking the way it's supposed to be to make those decisions on the road. So really great question. I wish we could elaborate more for mm-hmm. you, but it kind of comes down to each person's medical you know, information. Right. Mm-hmm. So we certainly do help you on that path, but medical takes more of a, you know, a yep. step in that than we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not medical professionals, so we're not going to tell you what to do or what not to do. That's why we have the team there to help you Mm -hmm. out. So, um, great question. Um, Arlen asked if you have any um, Monday through Fridays. Um, I know if you're looking into Arlen, depending on where you live, um, I know some of our intermodal accounts do have Monday through Friday type of um, schedules. Um, Mm -hmm. Whether you're wanting to be home like weekly or daily, it can kind of depend. Um, but yeah, I haven't definitely seen that before. We, a lot of the intermodals are more popular with that Monday through Friday type mm-hmm. of schedule. Now, start time, depending on the day, could vary um, depending on what the need is. So it could be like a second or third shift um, type of need. It's still Monday through Friday, but shift differential a little bit different there. So um, a lot of good questions. Uh, Hugo is looking for over the road solos. Hey, Hugo, <laughs> we want you to apply then. <laughs> a lot of opportunity yeah, yeah, for yeah, over the road. Yeah, um, <laughs> Anything over the road, yeah, absolutely. Um, I get the question too of like, I just want to go over the road. I just want to drive. Uh, awesome, thank you for calling. <laughs> <laughs> we do have plenty of that, and um, any any position too. If you're looking to um, stay out longer than what your schedule asks mm-hmm. for, awesome. Yeah, yeah, awesome. We're very flexible with that. Um, usually the rule of thumb, longer you'd stay out, the more time you'd have at home. Mm-hmm. We've had some that just, I just wanted to go drive for a month and then come home quick for a quick little repack and reset and then go back out and just make my miles. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So if you want to stay out longer than your allotted time, just check, talk to your uh, DBL or your driver business leader and they can definitely help you out on that. So we don't really talk about driver business leaders at all, but they're your go-to reacts while you're out on the road as mm-hmm. well. So... Um, and I want to mention too about if you can't get a hold of your DBL, there's so many other people that are here and you know around that can help you out with any question you may have. So if your DBL is out of the office for the day or just gone for the day, um, you can definitely definitely look into that. So mm-hmm. um, and lots of other questions too on where can they find you know looking for certain particular jobs in their area. How can they find those? So definitely just go to schneiderjobs.com. Um, all you have to do is put in your zip code at the very top middle of the page. What dr- a lot of drivers don't realize is that why that zip code is so important is how we are able to get you home for your home time determines and what positions you're available for mm-hmm. is all off that zip code. Mm-hmm. So that's why that zip code is so important. If you are planning on moving, you know, definitely have that conversation with your recruiter. Ideally, if you're living in one location and you're going to be moving in the next couple of weeks we would probably wait till you have your new address so we know where you're going to be living because otherwise the position you're applying for with your current zip code that position may not be something that's Mm -hmm. offered in a different zip code yeah so Mm -hmm. very very important to have those conversations with your recruiter Mm -hmm. as far as the rest of the application process then you put that zip code in Mm -hmm. on the left hand side of the screen you can look and search and or filter by you know what line of work are you looking to go into how much experience do you currently have Mm -hmm. what kind of home time are you looking for Mm -hmm. so a really great way to kind of narrow down your search right off the bat is clicking through that left hand column to make it a little less overwhelming because some areas there might be 25 plus positions available and that's a lot to click and read through Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and what's also nice is you can organize it in what line of business Mm -hmm. for dedicated intermodal Mm -hmm. tinker and that really kind of helps with the job search Um, matt also asked if you do you still have a a dbl if you are home daily yes Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, all drivers no matter what type of account you're home daily or you're out from months you know if you want to be out for months <laughs> every driver has a dbl so it's no matter it's, it's kind of like a uh, a manager while you're out driving mm-hmm. so yes every driver will have a dbl no matter what um miguel also asked if he lives in houston do you have an orientation facility in houston yes yep um now the houston facility is catered to our tanker we, you hear it referred to mm-hmm. as a bulk division so um if you are going into that line of business or you sign up for an account Yep, you'd be right in Houston. You don't even have to travel that far to get to orientation every day, <laughs> which is really nice. So, 
Um, yeah, so we have a couple facilities in, in the Texas area, but Houston caters to the tanker division. So they're very good at that and what they do. And so it's a good orientation site as well. And speaking Mm -hmm. of orientation, one thing we didn't cover as well is during orientation, we cover the expense of your hotel stay. It is double room occupancy, so you will have another Schneider driver as a roommate. The way we match roommates is off of smoker or non-smoker preferences, Mm -hmm. as well as gender. So that's the way that we are able to match. If you you really do not want to have a roommate, Mm -hmm. we are able to book you a single room. We still book that for you. You would just have to pay the discount discounted rate that the hotel gives mm-hmm. us at Schneider mm-hmm. um, you know as with any hotel you present your credit card when you check in mm-hmm. and then that's how that billing process and transaction works also kind of speaking off of the matching process if you are out on the road with your training engineer and say you are a female driver mm-hmm. and we are not mm-hmm. able to find a female training instructor to have you go out on the road with how does that process work So what we do is if, say for example, I was a female student and I had a male training engineer, the training engineer would actually stay in a nearby hotel at night Mm -hmm. and I would get to sleep in the truck. That way everybody's comfortable with the sleeping Mm -hmm. arrangement and you're still able to get that training during the day and then get used to the truck and that living arrangement at night. Mm -hmm. Great. Another thing that we didn't mention is the meals for orientation. Mm, good one. So a lot of a lot of drivers ask, you know, what do I do about my meals? Breakfast is going to be provided at the hotel if you're staying at the hotel. Um, then lunch will be provided at orientation. You'll just be responsible for your dinner. Um, so make sure you you know bring money for those incidentals. But really, just something good to touch on because mm-hmm. we get that question quite a, a lot. Bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so Miguel was the question that or person that asked about the Houston services. Thank you. <laughs> um, Jamie has a really great question. I want to touch on it. We hadn't touched on yet our jet set positions. So Jamie asked, do your jet set positions for intermodal use day cab trucks? If so, do you provide housing? So I'll let you, when you to take this one. Can I go for it? Okay. So for our jet set opportunities, the jet set is where you're out for 21 days and then you're home for five days, two travel days. So you are actually going to be staying in the truck. So you are going to be staying in the truck while you're out on the road. Um, It is going to be in a sleeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I like that you brought up the jet set positions. Those are great for um, anybody that likes working, um, you know, and likes being to travel and trying out new different things. It's an adventure. It's an adventure. (laughs) (laughs) Because the majority of those positions, you could literally, each time you fly, let's say hypothetically you live in El Paso, Mm -hmm. um, and you fly, we fly into Chicago one week, and then you go out on the road, fly back home. Then the next time you go out, we could fly you to someplace else other than other than you know Atlanta mm-hmm. whatever it may be so it's it's nice for those who are flexible and just like ready to rumble and ready to go um, you know but if you wanted to be you know a little more rigid or a little more jet set might not be the best spot so and you have to be able to fly so yeah yeah like we do cover fly. the cost yeah, yeah the airfare yep um, so um, so any room for somebody that's 65 years old 33 years of truck driving experience owner of my own Mark, why haven't you applied to us already? I don't understand. Yes. You yes. apply today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and we get that too. Well, I'm this old and I'm this much and I've been doing this. If you can drive a truck, you have your CDL, mm-hmm. you're safe. And you have a valid safe. DOT physical, yeah. we would love to bring you up. Yeah, so Mark. Yes, Mark. <laughs> apply. Um, so great question too. So, um, oh, and they were going back to the jet sets we're asking about the, the – can you just one more time with the schedule normally that I have? Yeah, so the schedule, you're going to be out for 21 days. You will have five full days at home, and then you'll have two travel days. Now, the travel days back home and for when you go out on the road, they're not included in, on the five days off. Right. So some people may state it as out for three weeks, home for one week. Um, so you, you technically, you're not driving for one week. Mm-hmm. Two of those seven days, though, are traveling. So mm-hmm. kind of is something to keep in mind if you hear it that way, um, just so that you're not surprised. So, yeah, the first travel day is flying you to the truck. Go out for a minim- minimum 21 days. You can stay mm-hmm. out long if you want. Second travel day is flying you home, and then you're five full days at home. Mm-hmm. Um, depending where you live, I have seen, too, um, kind of a newer thing for Jet Set accounts. Again, depending on where you live. Can't remember where it was. I saw it, what out of which state. Um, we have been giving some of our drivers the option of um, 
staying at home for those Jetson accounts just three days, and then we fly you back to the same truck. Whereas if you were out for or at home for five days, you might be in a different truck each time we fly. Mm -hmm. So that is um, something that's a little bit newer, um, just depending on um, where exactly we live, and I can't remember where I live. <laughs> and just recently interviewed somebody that that was an option as well for their Jet Set account. So um, if that's not available to you in your area, like, sorry. Um, but uh, it's a nice little way to get you to travel and have fun. A lot of our um, Jet Set um, and truckload trainers are right here at our operating centers and um, I said trainers, excuse me, managers, DVLs are right here in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. um, so may live in Florida, but fly up to Green Bay for orientation. That's just so that you can be in the same building as your manager and meet them, get to know them. So if you're on a jet set account, you're most likely flying to orientation. We'll help you out with that too. So um, is there any training on the road done at night time is another Ooh, question that Matt question. is asking. So, um, depends. Uh, the, your trainer that you're with for orientation is a current active driver. Um, so depending on what they have um, about, depending on what they have for their load or their haul that mm -hmm. week, you're basically on their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, the same, you're on the same sleep schedule too, I should say, you know, I think you mentioned that earlier. but. Um, so some training could be done at night, just depending on their haul or their load that particular that particular mm -hmm. time. So. And speaking of that training too, I think a lot of people are under the assumption that you're just driving to drive to get that extra practice. As Courtney is mentioning, mm -hmm. it's actual freight that you're being dispatched mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So you know, even us as the recruiters, we don't know exactly what freight you're going to get dispatched or where that week is going to take you. Mm -hmm. It may be within the current state you're in. It may be, you know, the next neighboring state. It really just depends on that load because it is actual customer freight from Schneider. Right, great question. And a lot of other great questions still coming in as well. Um, if we don't get to them today during the live, we'll definitely mm -hmm. respond to those once we end here today. What I do want to wrap up with one more time is <laughs> <laughs> just shameless plugging of our Schneider swag, we were calling it. Um, so basically, if you want to win we're at our contest throughout the month of October, if you want to win either a mug, a ball cap, whatever it may be, um, just text uh, contest to 28,000. And then once you do that, um, or excuse me, backtrack, have your CDL, <laughs> then text contest to 28,000. Um, once you do that, you'll get a response back with a link to the application. Just fill that out real quick. You're entered into a, draw, a drawing. We have a weekly drawing, so we'll go from now to the end of the month. I was told that this goes pretty well, and we get a lot of like good responses. A lot of people want it. Maybe it's something we can look into continuing. So that would be pretty cool. Um, it gets you some good Christmas gifts for all the rest of the year. <laughs> so um, again, if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask. Um, give us a call because we're here. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for you. Mark, I expect to see your application pretty soon, <laughs> sir. Uh, so check it, check us out, schneiderjobs.com. Uh, one more time with phone number and hours. Um, 1-800-44-PRIDE. You can reach us. We are standing by. Um, we're available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central. Uh, we are also available Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as the chat yeah. for yep. the contest... Text contest to 28,000 as well. That will help you get that additional information going too. So hope to see you soon. Ask additional questions. And if you have any additional questions, we'll type them back to you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>